Hey, super friends, this is Elena, and I'm here to say... No, I'm only joking. I'm not going to bust out a rap song like your Theo Pepe from Sunland Park. But what I am going to do is tell you about another way to support us and the show. Every week, we broadcast a new episode. 52 is the amount of episodes that we released last year. The number of bonus episodes that we released was one. Many more could have been recorded for only $2 a month. That's just six cents a day. You can receive our episodes a week early and ad free. Join online and Tio Pepe will personally send you a welcome kit with your free stickers. Your donation says we are here to help you. Please log on right now at patreon.com slash technically a conversation. The Mexican city of Tampico, Tamaulipas is in the southeastern region of Mexico, overlooking the Gulf of Mexico. It was once known for regularly getting hit by hurricanes, but a hurricane hasn't made landfall since 1966. Many believe this is due to the region being protected by aliens, as UFOs first started to be reported regularly in the region in 1967. Believers of this theory claim their extraterrestrial protectors have an alien base named Amupac a few miles from the coast of Tampico past the Miramar Beach. Today, we'll discuss the UFO event that spawned the Amupac theory, eyewitness accounts from a man who claims to have visited the alien base, and what might really be diverting hurricanes away from the region on this episode of Technically a Conversation. You're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined today by my lovely co host, Elena. How are you doing today? I am sorry, <laughs> I had a mental fart. <laughs> I was saying, did you just pull a Mitch McConnell on me? <laughs> I did. I was like rebooting and shit. <laughs> I am doing just fine, I think. <laughs> Maybe I was having a mini stroke. I don't know. <laughs> Do you smell burnt toast? No, 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 no uh, burnt toast. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> That's fine. I'm doing great also. Thank you for asking. I am glad to hear that you are doing great. I'm sorry I didn't ask. That's okay. I'm used to not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a... <laughs> brain fart right now. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> no, no problem. I can't believe this is already our second episode of March. I have a question for you. I know Isela fucks with Starbucks. Are you Starbucks gang also? I am. I was just uh, thinking to myself earlier today that I do prefer Starbucks over Dunkin' Coffee. Oh, no way. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people on the East Coast. Dunkin' is the way to go. But I don't know, I just, I'll try to order like the same coffee at Dunkin' and they don't have as many flavors either. And my favorite right now is the brown sugar oat milk latte or whatever. And they do have oat milk at Dunkin', but they don't have the brown sugar flavor. So even though it is a little bit less expensive at Dunkin', I will pay the extra money and get what I want at Starbucks. I remember when Isela and I did the Pepsi challenge with the, with, what was it the cucumber spice or the fuck what was it that we we're drinking? Pumpkin spice? Uh-huh. I know the, the Dunkin', I think both of us unanimously thought that it was better. Oh, really? Yeah. It tasted more like sugar. Yeah. Their drinks are very, very uh, sweet. I don't really like my coffee that sweet. Like I want to taste the coffee flavor. Yeah. I do prefer it when my coffee is very strong, but also, I mean, sugar is good for you. So it has more of that. <laughs> So, can't really complain. Is it good for you? <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. Actually, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Speaking of Starbucks flavors, did you hear that Starbucks was releasing a pork flavored coffee in China? I think that I might have skimmed over something, but I didn't pay too much attention to it just because it's in China. So, I was like, yeah, it's not going to be here. Well, you're in luck because I've got all the deets. 
So not only is the latte pork flavored, it also has a square slice of pork on a skewer resting on the cup rim. Like a chicharron or <laughs> a pork rind? <laughs> kind of. Like it just looks like a random piece of pork. Like it almost looks like it's a uh, spam. Ooh. The can ham. Yeah. <laughs> spam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Almost looks like a piece of that. Now it, it is only going to be released in China to mark the Lunar New Year because eating meat means prosperity in the coming year. But if it was to be released here in the US, would you try it? Maybe. I mean, didn't we have something with bacon beer or something? Yeah, the bacon beer. That was fucking awful, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we tried it. So I think I, I might. I guess it just depends on the price or maybe if I would just take a sip from it. Somebody give me a sip. <laughs> I don't know if I'd buy like an entire coffee. Maybe the description from CNN will either convince you or put you off. The drink combines Dongpo braised pork flavor sauce with espresso and steamed milk with extra pork sauce and pork breast meat for garnish. The heck is pork sauce? <laughs> or pork <laughs> breast meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like those uh, Glamato vibes where they like put a whole meal in the drink, the olives and the beef jerky <laughs> the shrimp and the yeah the carne seca and all that yeah i know starbucks just came out with a new drink called oleato i don't i don't know how you pronounce it oh with the olive oil yes i had that shit oh it was not good i uh, know just thinking about well i don't know i hear that it's good but I don't know. I, I would imagine having like oily discharge when I would go to the restroom or something. So Ew. Uh, <laughs> it did have like that oiliness feel in your mouth. And I, I didn't enjoy that. I thought because I've had the bulletproof coffee, which is grass fed butter in the coffee. And that's good. But the olive oil, no, I personally did not like it and I would not recommend it. But the way that Starbucks described it on their website or the menu it sounded really good but yeah no i would never ever get that again <laughs> yeah i know and as much as i love pork it's my second favorite animal to eat i don't think that i would try it either it's going to cost 67 yen or about 950 uh, many people are criticizing the price saying that they could get a whole plate of braised pork and go to a competing coffee shop and get two lattes for that much oh wow yeah and i was like damn here in the u.s pretty much Anywhere you go eat, it's going to cost you 20 bucks minimum. Minimum. Yeah. You know, unless you get like fast food, but even that's creeping up to like $10 minimum for a meal. So I kind of want to go to whatever restaurants they have over there that you can get all that shit for nine fifty. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's crazy. Sounds delicious too. Yeah, it does. But yeah, I'm about like at 60% that I would try it. I think that if someone I trusted said it was good, I would try it. But um. Not 68% sure that I won't. Mm. I want to know what this pork sauce is, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe just like when they cook the pork, like all the fucking like juices and shit that are <laughs> on the bottom of the pan. They just scrape that shit up and put it in the coffee. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. They're using olive oil in their coffee here. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the little charred bits. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of like when we used to go to In N Out. Like, I want fucking everything animal style on my burger, animal style, my fries, animal style, my strawberry milkshake, animal style, <laughs> <laughs> my coffee, animal style. Just scrape the the plancha or whatever it's called the the skillet or whatever. Yeah, just scrape it with all the shit from the meat. Put it in your fucking uh, <laughs> your strawberry shake. There's your pork sauce right there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Enough fucking around, Elena. Ready to get started? Oh, wow. I thought we had already gotten started. No. <laughs> I thought your your thing was going to be about the Starbucks thing. No? No. Hell no, girl. I got something good that we're going to talk about today. Oh, okay. I was like, wow. All right. <laughs> I got something good that we're going to talk about. All right. Let's see. So you ready to get started? Yes. <laughs> Great. Let's get started. What's the first city that you associate with aliens and UFOs? Roswell. Have you ever visited Roswell? Negative. Do you believe that UFOs and extraterrestrials 
might have landed on Earth before. No. Now, there are some people that believe that not only have extraterrestrials visited us, but they are our protectors, especially if you live in a certain region of the world. Now, this story was inspired by our cousin Gavi, as it's a story that I had never heard of until she told me about it. And I think you might find some of this research a little compelling. It might just change your mind. Okay. I'll tell you the facts and you tell me what you think. All right. The following is from a Vice article by Nathaniel Janowitz, an Al Dia news article by Beatriz Garcia, and El Sol de Tampico article and video by Antonio Sosa. Links in the show notes. Show notes. In October of 2022, Tropical Storm Carl was expected to hit Tampico, Tamaulipas, Mexico. But before making landfall, the storm went further south, missing the city entirely. In July of 2020, Tropical Storm Cristina was expected to hit Tampico, but when it arrived, it arrived in the form of rain. This is a pattern that has been observed for over 50 years. In fact, there hasn't been a major storm hit Tampico since 1966 when a major hurricane laid the city to waste. Hurricane stopped hitting Tampico after a mysterious event was observed in the area. On August 6, 1967, thousands of the city's inhabitants reported seeing flying saucers over the city. The airport's control tower reported counting nine unidentified objects in the sky. The flying saucers headed to the waters of the Miramar Beach to what people theorized is an alien base called Amupac. Is the lack of storms due to its extraterrestrial protectors? Maybe they're just protecting themselves and Tampico has benefited. Or could there be other factors for the lack of storms? Before we go over all the details of this phenomenon, are you familiar with Amupac? The extraterrestrial protectors of Tampico? I am not, but uh, does that mean that we may have some alien relatives? <laughs> Probably not, since um, this happened in 1967. And uh, actually, that was the thing that I was originally thinking, because our mom is from Tampico. And originally, I thought that why hadn't she ever told us about this incident? But it didn't happen until 1967. So our mom was no longer living there when all of this occurred. Mm hmm. And I talked to her last night to ask her if she was aware about the whole UFOs and Tampico thing. And she said that the first time that she learned about it was when our cousin Gabi was telling us about it. Mm. And um, she said that she left Tampico when she was five. So it was years before this happened. Yeah. And the way that this came about is that we were at our tia Conchita's house in the beginning of February. And on her fridge, she has a Tampico magnet with an alien and UFO as part of the Tampico logo. And I thought it looked cool, but I thought it was super strange. So I asked my cousin why there was an alien and UFO on the logo. And she explained the story about how some UFOs had been seen and that some people believe that they protect the area, which is why hurricanes don't hit the region anymore. And since then, I haven't really stopped thinking about that. So I thought that it would be an excellent topic for us to do this week's show. And also after doing 10 page scripts for the last couple of episodes, I needed a break from doing a deep dive into a subject. Yeah, I get you. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that either. They're the the Roswell of... Um, Mexico. Yeah. It's a little town called Mexico. Ever heard of it? Mexico and New Mexico. This OG Mexico. I'm like, huh, interesting. The aliens got confused. They thought they were going to New Mexico, but ended up in old Mexico. Oh, shit. You just blew my mind, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> They got their coordinates wrong. <laughs> yeah. And actually, because you know how us Mexas, we always like over exaggerate everything. So like I think Roswell from everything that I saw in the pictures of Tampico, Roswell looks up to Tampico because like Tampico does everything like crazy. Like they have restaurants that are uh, aliens. They have hotels that are aliens. Like, I kind of want to go check it out. It's super cool. I know. I've been wanting to go visit for a long time, so we should definitely make a trip and use our passports. Yeah, before they expire. Exactly. So pretty much everything is tied back to the UFOs that were spotted in Tampico on August 6, 1967. It was a pretty big deal and made front page headlines on El Sol de Tampico, the local Tampico newspaper, and was apparently witnessed by thousands. And for those that might not know, Tampico is about 300 miles south of Texas, in the state of Tamaulipas, Mexico. It's almost smack in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Prior to 1967, Tampico would get hit regularly with hurricanes, as you would pretty much expect 
based on its geographical location. And my mom even said that the reason that her family moved from Tampico to Juarez was because of all the hurricanes that they were getting. There was a really big hurricane in 1955 and another in 1965. Beatriz Garcia, a woman interviewed by Vice, stated she lived through both of those hurricanes and both of them completely destroyed the city. Garcia also claims that she and a friend both saw several flying objects in a formation in the sky one evening in 1967. When she told her family about it, they tried to downplay it and stated that it was just airplanes. She stated that it couldn't possibly be planes because they were very slow. There were lots of them and they just appeared and their formation was something that planes don't do. She received validation the next day when the newspaper reported on the incident and she realized that she wasn't alone in what she witnessed. What are your thoughts so far? There are several events that are similar to this of uh, lights in a formation that can't be explained or whatever. I don't know what they are. I don't think they're flying saucers. That's just me. But do go on. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to see what your thoughts were so far. And yeah, I agree. (laughs) There are a lot of things that are witnessed and we're not able to identify what it is, but you don't automatically assume that it's uh, aliens and UFOs just because you don't know what it is. It just means that you don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. So uh, like I was saying, since that event, Tampico has pretty much become the Roswell of Mexico. Everywhere on the beach, there are alien murals and statues. Merchants on the beach are selling tons of alien merchandise. There are the alien-themed restaurants and hotels. And I definitely want to stay at an alien hotel. Yeah, that would be cool. Juan Carlos Ramon Lopez Diaz who is the president of the Association of Scientific UFO Research of Tamaulipas, or ACOT for short, stated that he believes that the aliens set up their base Amupac shortly after Hurricane Ines hit the region in 1966, killing 74 people. The municipal government has had some fun with all the extraterrestrial attention, and they placed a green Martian at Miramar Beach in 2013, which was sadly promptly stolen. Aww. And they officially dubbed the last Tuesday in October the Day of the Martians, which doesn't make sense. I would have done it the day that the flying objects were first observed. Yeah. But for some reason, it was the last Tuesday in October. Hmm. Devout Catholics claim that it's not the aliens and Amupak that is protecting the region, but Our Lady of Mount Carmel that is protecting them. This, Lopez Diaz's eyewitness accounts from his claimed visit to Amupak and the probable explanation of what really is diverting the hurricanes away from the region after we return from a quick commercial break. Hello, my name is Hallie, and I'm the host of the Morbid Curiosity Podcast, a podcast for the creepy community, covering history's most notorious serial killers, urban legends, ancient remains, historical tragedies, and obscure medical conditions. Join the creepy community anywhere podcasts are found, and let us satisfy your curiosity. Whether you like history or not, if you care about bravery, wisdom, passion, larger-than-life characters, and some of the most emotionally intense moments in human experience, you've come to the right place. My name is Daniele Bolelli. I'm a university history professor, writer, and martial artist, and it will be my honor to be your guide in a journey to the place where history and epic collide. Despite my insanely thick Italian accent, somehow History on Fire is one of the most popular history podcast in the world. If you give it a listen, you will find out why. So please check out History on Fire wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, I'm Darian. I could lead Climate Giant. And I'm DJ. To be fair, a lot of dragons I know come from Norse mythology. <laughs> and we're two story-loving siblings who co-host the podcast Muses of Mythology. Where'd Aphrodite come from? Well, she rose from the ocean from yeah. Seafoam. Yep. From parts of Urnanos. Uh, uh, Say it again? Ur- Interesting. We journey through Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, exploring how ancient myths become modern pop culture. If you like Percy Jackson, classical mythology, or hyper-analyzing comic book movies, you'll love our show. Listen for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. And we're back. 
We're back. Did you see any UFOs during our break? I sadly did not. What about Our Lady of Mount Carmel? I did see her. Yeah, what did she tell you? No, just kidding, I didn't. <laughs> she told me that uh, Tampico is being saved from the hurricanes because of her. No, just kidding. <laughs> you know, she would say that. She would. That's so Our Lady of Mount Carmel. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so her. <laughs> you know, whenever I see the word Carmel, my brain thinks caramel. And I start craving Rolos for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Before the break, I teased that it might be Our Lady of Mount Carmel that might be protecting the region. And also a possible explanation as to why the region hasn't experienced any hurricanes in over 50 years. Before we discuss those topics, let's talk a little bit about Amupac. Because we do have a description of the place from Juan Carlos Ramon Lopez Diaz, the president of ACOT, who claimed to have visited Amupac on July 19th, 2013, using what he called a guided meditation using his astral body. So whenever anybody says using um, astral bodies and all that stuff, you know, it's like super legit. Right. <laughs> Lopez Diaz stated that Amupac is intraterrestrial and multidimensional and made of crystal and metal. The aliens are said to be nearly 10 feet tall and thin and light-skinned. In an interview Lopez Diaz did with El Sol de Tampico, the local newspaper, he stated that many people called this apparition of UFOs a phenomenon, but to call it a phenomenon would imply that this is something that is rare, but UFOs in Tampico are common. Tamupac can't be reached using the physical form because we operate in a three-dimensional world. The aliens operate in a five-dimensional world. Being in a meditative state between sleep and being awake allows you to tune into a certain frequency that allows you to utilize your astral body. In order to prepare for this voyage, you must detoxify your body by not consuming meat. He and other members of ICOT were able to reach this meditative astral state and were invited to visit Amupac by going through the control center seawall that is near the pier. They reached this control center by entering a sphere of light and flying over the city and onto the beach. After advancing a few kilometers into the sea, they reached some gates that open, then a ramp, and they enter the city which again is made of crystal and metal. He compared it to areas of Stockholm, but without trees. There is light, but you cannot see a sun. The aliens they were allowed to interact with appeared to specialize in psychology, or at least that was Lopez Diaz's impression based on his experience. Most of the inhabitants of Amupac were scientists, engineers, and doctors. So, sounds pretty credible, right? Now I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that explanation makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a bad trip. <laughs> I know. Once you compared it to areas of Stockholm, but without the trees, like that's when it finally clicked to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's when it was like, oh, okay, I know, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think they were doing the... The ayahuasca. <laughs> I think it was fucking taking oh, ayahuasca. <laughs> I think so, man. No manches. That's that's some crazy shit. So is he the only person that has written about these claims of doing astral projections or whatever? <laughs> no, he's got like a little club called ICOT. So it's a cult. No. <laughs> it's not necessarily a cult. They call themselves the Association of Scientific UFO Research of Tamaulipas. Or in Spanish, it's Asociación de Investigación Científica sobre OVNIs de Tomaulipas. Okay, that still sounds like a cult. <laughs> well, they didn't check if they were wearing Nikes, so who knows? <laughs> they don't have to wear Nikes. They could be sketchers. I'm pretty sure Nikes is a requirement for cults. That was just for the Heaven's Gate. Mm, that's what I base all my knowledge of cults on. Mm. What about Scientology? Do they wear Nikes? I'm pretty sure you do have to wear Nikes for those as well. Pretty <laughs> sure it's like Prada or something else. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Amupac was first named by electrical engineer Alberto Secua, who referred to that site being from Mars. And I don't know where they got Amupac from that, as even in Spanish, seres provenientes de Marte doesn't immediately scream out Amupac to me. And I tried searching for an answer to that, but all I could find were stories referencing Amupac near Tampico. Lopez Diaz believes that Amupac serves as a school where the aliens are monitoring the evolution of human consciousness. Most people, especially with everything that's going on now, 
operate in a state of fear, but when people's frequency changes to operating in a state of love, it makes them candidates to have other experiences on other planets. In this case, the other planet is Mars, as that's where the extraterrestrials are from, apparently. He also stated that they are very serious, and the whole time that he was with them, they never smiled. He believes that like the astral body, there is another body known as the emotional body, and that's something that the aliens don't possess like us humans because they don't need emotions. I wish I didn't need emotions. That would help me sleep better at night. <laughs> right. <laughs> they sound very boring. <laughs> now they're aliens. They've got to be fun. So has anybody ever told them that they have all those rovers in Mars collecting data and there are no living beings or these beings left Mars so that they can... Uh, so you can live in Amaupak or whatever. <laughs> Amaupak. Eso. I don't know. He might have been absent the day that they sent out that memo. <laughs> it was absent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me actually bring Mr. Lopez Diaz on the line. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Special guest. <laughs> yeah, I know. And actually, you know, he, he is actually really serious. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Uh, he stated the extraterrestrials were most interested in learning from humans how humans feel, since emotions do not exist for them. They were also interested in monoatomic gold, which is a white powder derived from gold, and platinum, which is associated with mystic and extraterrestrial powers, whatever that means. I think the white powder that they're doing is the type of white powder they sniff up their nose. <laughs> Maybe. Jeez. He stated that he was able to maintain contact with them for approximately one minute, he has shared his anecdotes with others and stated that this has allowed him to meet others in his community that have had similar experiences in dreams. And um, it's funny because when you see Lopez Diaz speak, he seems like he's really serious. I mean, when you look at people like Giorgio Sucalos, he looks like a total nut job. Mm -hmm. But Lopez Diaz gives off a totally different vibe. He gives off college professor vibes, where Sucalo gives off burnout frat boy cosplaying as a college professor vibes. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that I believe Lopez Diaz, but I can see why others would be drawn to him. He doesn't look like he's full of shit, in other words, when he speaks. Right. Yeah. Well, just because he doesn't look crazy doesn't mean that he isn't crazy. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I don't look crazy, but if you ever have, if you ever listen to one of our podcasts, shit. <laughs> Who said you don't look crazy? <laughs> Who told you that lie? Ah, oh, the grass. <laughs> Oopsie. Damn. You guys could have at least had an intervention with me or something. <laughs> uh, we have. <laughs> you just didn't want to listen to it. The first step is admitting it or whatever. Well, I did admit that I'm pretty crazy. Oh, that's true. No, you said you didn't look crazy. Yes, I do not look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, the belief in Amupak has continued to grow. In 1988, meteorologists predicted that Hurricane Gilbert was supposed to hit Madero and Tampico, but the hurricane diverted and never slammed into the region. It killed 300 people and caused billions in property damage in the US, Caribbean, and Southern Mexico, but Tampico was spared. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina was expected to hit Tampico. The city locals went to Miramar Beach holding signs pleading for the aliens to protect them once again as the hurricane approached. Do you want to take a guess at what happened? The hurricane was diverted. Exactly. And it hit New Orleans, causing nearly 2,000 deaths. It's because New Orleans forgot to pray to the aliens. Yeah. They don't have their own amupak. They don't. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't know if you saw me earlier when you were talking about how these people went out on the shore with their signs. And I was just like shaking my head like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, Independence Day when the aliens arrive and the people are in the buildings with their stupid signs and then they get blasted. It's not a good idea to do that. <laughs> if you ever learned anything from a movie. I think that I would be amongst those people. You would be welcoming the aliens? Yeah, either that or hoping that they... They come in peace? That they uh, abduct me. <laughs> oh, we come in peace. <laughs> I would love to go on a spaceship and see like what they have, like their technology and everything. I don't know. It just seems really cool to me. Yeah. Being abducted is like one of my dreams, so... Yeah, I would not... Especially after watching Fire in the Sky. Never. That was the thing that inspired me to want to get... No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, that that is like a total fucking nightmare hellscape. Uh, what happened to that guy? Yeah, yeah, no, no, thanks, not for me. Not everyone in Tampico region is convinced that extraterrestrials are their protectors. Carolina Infante, an official historian in Madero, which is another major city that shares the Miramar Beach with Tampico, stated their city built a monument to La Virgen del Carmen, or Our Lady of Mount Carmel, who is considered the patron saint of sailors and fishermen. Many religious members of the community believe the protection comes from her, not the aliens. Elena, would you like to take a guess at what year the monument for Our Lady of Mount Carmel was built? 2003. Exactly, 1967, the same year the <laughs> yeah. UFOs were first noticed in the region. So I'm just wondering, and I don't know if you know this, but when there's a hurricane warning and these people go out there with their signs for the aliens, is there an opposing team for the people that are with Mount Carmel or not Mount Carmel, whatever her name is? <laughs> Mount Carmel. <laughs> <laughs> Our Lady of Mount Carmel. <laughs> It's a la Our Lady. <laughs> la Ruca de Mount Carmel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering because, you know, whenever there's something like that, there's always like those real religious people that go out there to tell you that you're, um, what's it called? A worshiping a false god. I mean, these people are not worshiping, but in a way, sort of. You know, I, I initially thought that too, just because Mexico is like, predominantly Catholic. Yeah. But if you take a walk around Miramar Beach, it's clear which supernatural entity is more popular because everything is aliens and you don't see much Our Lady of Mount Carmel paraphernalia there. So it's just that one statue <laughs> surrounded by aliens. <laughs> and that's not even in uh, Tampico, that, that's in Madero. That's like a, a neighboring city. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be like I guess like the colon of us and like Las Cruces. Hmm. Interesting. Even the graffiti artists have pivoted to making alien murals, which have mostly been met positively by residents. And as much as I love to revel in the supernatural and extraterrestrials and all that fun stuff, you know the part that's next, right? The facts? I don't know. <laughs> correct. This time you were correct. I didn't say yeah. correct. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> <laughs> it's the logical explanation behind why Tampico has been spared from hurricanes for close to 60 years. Meteorological harbor master Javier Francisco Alvarez, who tracked weather in the region for years, stated that the trajectories of these hydrometeorological phenomena are erratic and don't always hit the same places. He stated that several other cities along the coast haven't been hit directly by a hurricane in a long time, not just Tampico or Madero. He stated that since the water near the coast of southern Tamaulipas is slightly cooler than other regions in the Gulf of Mexico, it pulls in air mass that rejects the hurricanes, but he doesn't believe that the region's luck will continue forever. He states that while the explanation of the Martians has developed into a fun oral tradition and has begun to transcend several generations, it is important that the people of the region don't blind themselves and adopt protective measures in the event of a hurricane. Also, Meteorological Harbor Master is a badass title. If I would have known that I could have gone to school and become a Meteorological Harbor Master, I wouldn't have wasted my time on psychology. <laughs> <laughs> but being a meteorologist or a Harbor Master, I'm sure, is just a bunch of predictions anyway. So I think you can still go back to school for that if you want to. <laughs> You're still young. Well, but yeah, they are predictions but their predictions based on patterns that they've noticed and based on science. Yeah. Rosario Romero, a climate researcher for the National Autonomous University of Mexico, also agrees that meteorological harbor master is a badass title. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I don't know if she agrees or not, but she does agree with Javier Francisco Alvarez that broader atmospheric conditions such as prevailing westerly winds and high-pressure subtropic systems are driving hurricanes away from the region and toward the southern coast of the United States. Romero also warned that even though the region hasn't been directly hit by a hurricane since 1966, Madero did suffer significant flooding in 2013 at the hands of Hurricane Ingrid, and it's important for residents to always be prepared for the unexpected turns a storm can take. So what do you think, Elena? It's a fun story, huh? 
It is a fun story. And his explanation is basically what I was thinking too. <laughs> Are you a meteorological harbor master? No, I'm I'm barely um junior. <laughs> Meteorologist Junior. <laughs> I'm not a master yet. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's that sounds like something like out of Dungeons and Dragons and shit. Yeah. It's like I'm a level seven meteorological harbor master. <laughs> <laughs> level seven. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just think it sounds cool. It does. And I want to do something a little bit different. I feel like we've been focusing a lot on American stories recently. So as a Mexas, I jumped at the chance to cover a Mexican urban legend and share it with the English-speaking world and other Chicanos who might not have been aware of it. And we weren't aware of it, and we have family from there. That blows my mind. I know. <laughs> Our mother is from Tampico, and she didn't even know about it. Well, but, I mean, she's visited semi-recently, and she still didn't say or bring back anything with aliens on it. I know. That would have been the first thing that I would have... I mean, her knowing us, she would have started... I went to Tampico and there were aliens everywhere. Yeah, right? I don't know. That was kind of, that's kind of strange that it just never came up in the conversation, but whatever. See, we should have gone. That's what I was telling my mom. I told her, if you would have told us from the very beginning that there was alien shit there, those fucking alien hotels, I would have been the first one to join you to Tampico. Like, I, I, I would have gone there before her, you know? <laughs> But actually, it is very dangerous there because there are a lot of cartels. So it's like super dangerous. It's like Juarez, the, all the crime and the killings and everything. So that's the only like bad side about it. So they're like a alert red or whatever travel wise. I think red is like level two or something. Yeah, there's um there's a lot of areas in Mexico. Well, I don't want to say a lot, but there are a few areas in Mexico that you really don't want to visit. Juarez and Tampico are two of them just because of how bad the crime is. Right. Wow. I didn't know Tampico too. Yeah. Uh, apparently, since they're really close to the southern part of Texas, there's a lot of drug cartels there and shit. And they're right there like at the beach so they can like import shit from the sea instead of going by land. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. It's in a very strategic place, I feel. Yes. And they don't get hit by hurricanes apparently, so <laughs> it's a nice little place to set up shop. Leave a nice little uh, drug empire for your family to inherit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make uh, cocaine aliens. Have you seen those? <laughs> the statues? Of cocaine aliens? Not aliens, but they make uh, statues of La Virgen Maria or whatever. But it's all cocaine. I had not heard about that. Yeah. Like um, when people are, are trying to import stuff like that, there's like specialists who actually will turn the little statue thing over and pick at it to make sure that it's not made out of cocaine. Mm, that's very smart. So maybe they make uh, alien statuettes with the uh, cocaina. Very smart. See? You no longer have to worry about smuggling drugs inside your body cavities. You can now just make, uh, <laughs> make statues out of them. Yeah, well, I think people still do that too. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to add, Elena? Uh, no. Well, before you mentioned the crime, I was thinking, man, I might go retire in Tampico because I've always wanted to live by the ocean. And I'm like, cool, no hurricanes. Then you talked about the cartels and the crime. And I was like, oh, never mind. Um, I'm sure the, the cops over there got it, though. I'm sure they'll, they'll clean it up pretty quickly. Sure. <laughs> sure they will. <laughs> eh, it can't be that much of a problem, I don't think. Eh, probably not. Special shout out to our super homie, super friends, Sophia, Natasha. Eric, and Angie. If you want to be super cool and help support the show, get the episodes a week early and ad-free. Get your name shouted out on the show and get some stickers from us a few times a year. Check us out at patreon.com slash technically a conversation or check the show notes. Show notes. Best of all, it's only $2 a month, baby. You can even buy cigarettes or an alien souvenir in Tampico for that. You can't even buy cocaine alien souvenirs for that. Yeah, you definitely cannot buy any <laughs> cocaine anything for that for $2. <laughs> I know. How come you did it like Doc Brown? That's what it reminded me of. Because I'm crazy, apparently. I'm fucking crazy, <laughs> Marty. You're crazy, Marty. Oh, crazy, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Marty. 22 gigawatts or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, since Elena said cocaine... We hope that you enjoyed the show. 
and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. Yeah. Follow us on the socials at GreetingsTAC. Email us at GreetingsTAC at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669. Marty, if you have a story about extraterrestrials protecting you that you want to share with us, Marty, 22 gigabytes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what he said. (laughs) I'm surprised that I was able to say almost a full sentence like that. (laughs) (laughs) Without taking a breath. (laughs) All right, all right, all right. In October of 2022, or 2022. In 2022 sounds weird, huh? No, 2022. Did you freeze? Oh, you, hold on. You stopped. Are you there? There you are. There's two of you. Yeah, I don't know why there's two of me. But um, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, what happened? You're gone. <laughs> yeah, I lost you completely. So I went out and um, I went back in. Let me let me try and kick out the other Jose. You guy's an asshole anyway. Okay. All right. Can you still see me? Yes. All right. Let me put it on one lower. Oh, yeah. It says that both of our internets are shitty now. Awesome. Must be a spectrum thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Wait. I was like, oh, I think you glitched again. No, it's just uh, I was McConnelling. <laughs> you were doing a like, Mitch McConnell. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I was being such a Mitch. <laughs> such a Mitch. <laughs> All right. Or Our Lady of Mount Caramel, who is considered the Caramel. You said caramel. <laughs> On next week's episode of Technically a Conversation, new episodes drop Monday. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a show.